Welcome to sportsbookreview.com. I'm Flash and it's Serie A. It's back. It's a massive league. But I tell you what, there's going to be a few shocks. Normally it's like tight and cagey, but we've got them sides who love their goals. I've got two great guests who know the Serie A inside out. But first of all, if you could like this video, then please subscribe, press the button, ring the bell, and we will notify you of any content. Remember the thumbs up. That's an appreciation for my two guests. My first guest is Alex. My main guest, if Alex doesn't mind, is Mr. Italia himself. Bienvenuto, Tancredi Palmeri. Buongiorno, buongiorno to everybody. So good to have everything back. I don't know where you guys, in which place of the world you are actually set up. I see a bit of a sun tanning, so that suggests me that you are with Flip Flop and Bermuda under the desk <laughs> while you are sitting. Finally, we are back. We are back. The Serie A is back. I don't know if we will back also the stickers, <laughs> but we are back. I know that you guys are back with Premier League as well and the other things, but it is so good. And the preview was so good because, I mean, yeah, there was tactics and everything, but the Coppa Italia semi-finals and final was uh, entertaining, uh, even if there weren't goals. And someone said before the semi-finals that Napoli was going to win the Coppa Italia. I don't know who it is, but well, it's a good way to start. <laughs> so you're on fire straight away, Tan. I would say you're my old friend, but obviously I don't want to be giving your age away. Now, let me talk to you about them two shirts behind you. One's in one Sampdoria. Are you split 50 50? Uh, Inter Sampdoria? Uh, no split, no way split. Look, Sampdoria is, uh, uh, we know it's fighting for relegation. Uh, the thing is that, though, since Claudio Ranieri came in, there is uh, never expect entertainment, never expect entertainment, but at least they are, uh, uh, they have recovered uh, a bit in, in defense, uh, they keep the, uh, the goal shot, they concede very little. Thing is that Inter in the semi final of Coppa Italia, they played so good already, found the goal uh, only once. Lukaku and Lautaro had a bad night, but all the other things were good. Inter was playing good, and there was a lot of criticism on Antonio Conte, which makes me think they will violently bounce back. So no way 50-50. I'm going to be all the way for Inter, but even in a large way, I think Inter uh, might even win with at least, at least two goals gap. Save it, Tan, save it. I mean, I just love the fact that you've opened up the show with disappointment and Lukaku in the same sentence. Now, your partner in crime, your Batman, so we need a Robin. <laughs> Ain't often he's Robin, so we're going to go to Alex. Alex, Sierra, I know you absolutely love Sierra. Yeah, it's my uh, favourite uh, league uh, to bet on. Uh, we had an amazing season so far. Uh, you know me, I love Atalanta. I'm with them all the way. Uh, they were the surprise package this season. They qualified in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. When it's Atalanta playing, even the neutral fans will enjoy it because they are bringing that attacking style of play we all love. And uh, imagine that, uh, um, yes, Inter and Sampdoria, we'll talk about them uh, later on. But uh, I'm sure that uh, Atalanta and Sassuolo should be by far the most exciting games uh, uh, for, for this video that uh, we are filming right now. Oh, listen, every game's going to be exciting. Let me just remind everyone in the chat, we are live, so if you've got any thoughts, then throw them in there. Tips, leans, and we'll just discuss them because this is what we do on here. We all put the, uh, our thoughts into a melting pot and then we discuss and then we come out and then we make sure that we have it on the right side of the picks. Now, let me just give you a little recap of how we were when we left three months ago. Freddie, can you show me the bottom of the table, please? Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so we got Brescia adrift at 16 points, Spall adrift at 18. But then it gets interesting because we've got Lecce at 25, Genoa at 25, Sampdoria at 26, Torino 27 and Udinese at 28. Tan, we know we've two of the three spots have gone. Who do you expect to be relegated with them? Uh, you know what? If I look at how the way, the way they play has to be Genoa, if I look at that. Lecce got much less potential on cards, but they are playing very good. They try. They've been proactive. Just think they've been able to draw with Inter. 
they've been able to draw with Juventus and largely deserving that point because uh, Liberani, former Lazio captain, uh, is really playing uh, with the uh, new Spanish style, uh, Tiki Taka. You can never know though, because uh, in some way, Genoa is always finding a way. But what is good for Genoa? The atmosphere in Marassi. I don't know if you ever played there, even uh, for a friendly game. The atmosphere in Marassi when Sandori is playing or when uh, Gen- sorry, Gen- Sandori is playing or when Genoa is playing, it's fantastic. But we know that the stadiums are empty now, and we don't know for how long it will be. I think that missing the crowd for Genoa will particularly affect them. If I have to pick one, I say Genoa. I always love that uh, no matter the opponent, they are going for the win, they are going for the points. Uh, this is what uh, what we like. Uh, Genoa is the correct uh, uh, choice here. I don't think Sampdoria will do it. I don't think Torino will do it. Sampdoria with Ranieri, as uh, Tan said, uh, I think that uh, um, they will stay there. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if uh, this round against uh, Inter, but uh, probably they will take some points uh, uh, from their opponents uh, later on uh, uh, for uh, to... Uh, I don't know whom they are playing next because I'm all focused on this round of fixtures. Um, but I'm sure that uh, Ranieri, a- even against Inter, they will go for the draw. I'm sure they will have an at- a defensive approach. They will park the bus and uh, they will try to score on the break. But um, against the big sides, they are doing that. But against the, the smaller sides, they, uh, they, they have the capability of a good attack. Some talented uh, players, but I think that Genoa here is the correct uh, um, is the correct choice uh, for uh, uh, the the third team to be relegated. Well, the, the big thing. Don't worry, me- Alex, if you still uh, don't know the next fixture because there is a, a new game every two days. I, f- I believe actually that the, the half of the squad is splitting and is already traveling uh, to the other venue where to play. There is just one game every day. I, I, I can't go. You just think about playing fantasy football in this moment. You, you are really freaking out. It's like. It's like going on a on a prom night when you have to be graduated. You just freak out. Oh, we've got like 43 games in the next 44 days. It's just going to be absolutely mental. But if you're a football or soccer lover, then this is definitely the place to be. But I love the fact that from Udinese down to Lecce, there's only three points, which means there's going to be an intensity, a desperation and a positiveness to try and get the job done. Now, let's go to the top because that's just as interested. Freddie... Slip me the top, please. OK, so we've got Roma in six on four, or in, yeah, fifth on 45 points. Atalanta, 48. Inter, 54. Then the gap. Lazio, 62. Juve, 63. Tan, I'm going to come to you. Are Juve going to spew this? Is there a chance that Lazio can actually win it? Look, there is more than a chance. Uh, I have to say... Uh, that very lucky prediction of Napoli winning Coppa Italia went together uh, 10 days ago with Napoli taking Coppa Italia, Juventus taking the title. Why so? Not only because of the level of Juventus, but exactly for the reason of uh, not having crowd. Why am I saying this? Because in this football that, even for betting, everything is new, there are so many variables to count uh, that we never know. Well, if you think of what well, you know better than anybody else, when there is uh, one team that is much better than the other on cards and is playing away uh, at almost some minnows, the push of the home ground, the push of the crowd is helping to fill that gap. Now, there won't be those crowds in Lecce, Genoa, uh, Sampdoria, whatever. So the likes of Juventus won't drop points there. That's why I'm saying... Uh, and I will stick to the Juventus prediction. To be honest, though, the way they played in the Coppa Italia final, mamma mia, it was a shamble. It seemed like the Bacayao was rotten, the one that ate Cristiano Ronaldo, and he offered a rotten Bacayao to all the rest of Juventus players because they really were a shamble. They, they were just holding the ball, never speeding up, playing older than the actual age of Maurizio Sarri. And when I saw that, I thought, or Juventus is fantastically bouncing back from that defeat, or they are going to totally crash. I still believe in the self-esteem of Cristiano Ronaldo and the other champions. But to be honest, the money to risk 
those are on Lazio. They're just hoping that the Coppa Italia games have actually blown off the cobwebs because some of the boys looked unfit and not really up for the fight. Who do you go with? Champions and obviously the Champions League spots, Alex. I'm going with Juventus uh, because uh, they have a better uh, um, the better bench. Uh, Lazio, on the other side, have a shorter bench. Uh, um, their players are not uh, such a top level as uh, Juventus. Uh, remember that I said to you um, why Lazio uh, left the Europa League uh, aside and uh, focused on uh, uh, focused on Serie A because exactly of the. Uh, players they have at their disposal because they were going all in for Serie A. They have an, they had an absolutely amazing uh, uh, season so far. Let's not forget about uh, Inter Milan right now. Yes, they are nine points uh, uh, behind uh, Juventus. Uh, they have a match in hand. Uh, they will probably win that, so they will go at six points. They have also a great squad, uh, and uh, Conte is doing an amazing job there. So uh, despite uh, them uh, uh, losing those uh, two matches before uh, the lockdown against uh, Lazio and Juventus, exactly the two teams uh, that uh, they are fighting for the trophy i still think that uh, they they have some chances imagine that we have we still have 12 rounds to go till the end of the season a lot of points in in, in place 12 uh, 12 multiplied with 3 is exactly how many points 36 so imagine that uh, a lot of stuff might change and uh, uh, but i i see juventus uh, winning it lazio inter and hopefully my beloved Atalanta um, securing that uh, fourth place and playing once again in uh, Champions League. And uh, you will see because now Champions League this season will be played uh, with a final eight format. I'm sure that Atalanta will have something to say uh, there. Yeah, you love your Atalanta. Now, just before we go and crack on with the first game, then if you press the link in the description, then that will take you over to all the soccer articles, not just Alex, says Dave Bear, says Martin Green. So go over there, enjoy yourself. And also, before we get started, we will be giving the American odds. But again, if you have a little look, we've put a link down that gives you the SBR odds converter. So press that if you're a little bit. But normally, if it's plus 111, it's like 11 to 10 in the European odds. Let's crack on. Tan, I'm coming to you. Torino plus 120, draw plus 230, and Palmer plus 250. Break down the game for me, please. Uh, look, uh, Torino had changed the manager uh, cup one month and a half before uh, the league was halted. And the new manager, uh, did, he get, did he get two points? Did he get three points? Did he get four? He got zero. Zero so far. Zero. Is, this is the perfection. This is the Torino manager career more than no longer so far. Uh, now, sooner or later, he's going to break the down. It's going to happen. But Parma are very tough. Uh, uh, mind, everything that we are saying for the first two, three games is obviously up in the air because there are so many new things to, uh, to count. We saw in Bundesliga the first games were uh, a bit shaky for everybody. Uh, but Torino are feeling, uh, uh, are, are really shattered in their confidence. Consider that probably in these uh, four months, were the club that the most were hoping that league wasn't resumed. Because as the table goes, it, they are only a couple of points over the relegation. They haven't been in that position for the whole season. They haven't been not even close to that. So it's like uh, you have played, it's like conceding a goal after a boring nil nil just half a, half a minute before the half time. So you go back in the changing room all full with the doubts. So this is the Torino that is presenting in front of Parma that are very smart, very young, very fast. Uh, we'll see if they already have the pace for that. I would say that the fear that Torino is feeling Will and the fact that they still have to get one point will push them to go out on pitch. Uh, yes, parking the bus at least for the beginning for as much they can hold. And Parma, it will not push at the beginning, you know, because anyway, everybody got has to start to get in use with the with the pace of uh, of playing. So if I should take a pick, can I take a pick? You can take uh, a am pick. Am I allowed to that? If I should take a pick, I would go for a draw at the first start. 
OK, would you uh, would you go with a 1-1 one, one draw? You think both teams can score? Uh, at the first half of the, fun, uh, the full time. OK. Uh, the one, one full time. Alex, we've got a 1-1 one, one draw. First up, Tan's come in. He's given us a correct result as well. Uh, yeah, no, it looks uh, great uh, that uh, draw at halftime, which is priced for our friends to know uh, who are watching us at 2.1, so above even money. So basically, you double your money with uh, if you play that um, uh, draw at half, not draw, yes, draw at halftime. Uh, I'm seeing also an under 2.5 goals, uh, so 1.8 uh, uh, for an under 2.5 goals. But I really think that uh, um, Torino will clinch this. I think that uh, uh, they had m more time to prepare. Uh, I'm saying I'm, I will say to you about Parma a little bit. Uh, one of their uh, best players, uh, uh, Gervinio, just rejoined the team yesterday. Gervinio, uh, in Clase. Uh, is uh, um, training uh, on his own, so he's doubtful. Petzela uh, also separately. Grassi and uh, Siligardi also separately. Uh, so they are all doubtful. Um, if they had a full squad at their disposal, I think that I would uh, rather go with Parma with the draw no bet option. But in this case, uh, and uh, of course after seeing uh, Torino um, uh, st sitting there just two points uh, uh, clear of the danger zone. Very, very strange to see them in that spot after so many years. I, I don't know, I don't know if, when exactly last time uh, they were fighting uh, for relegation, but I, I don't remember uh, uh, since the time I'm, Some, I'm betting a decade, uh, on, a, a decade. On, the, on the Italian Serie A. So I'm really sure that... Uh, um, Zaza, Belotti, uh, Ansaldi, Bazelli will come, uh, will come uh, to to show that uh, what happened uh, till now it was a mistake. Uh, I don't trust uh, Moreno Longo at all. Uh, no uh, results for him in uh, his coaching career. You remember that we talked about uh, that uh, before lockdown, and we said that uh, he trained in some. Weird uh, teams. I think that last time he uh, he trained for Sinone, if I remember correct. If I don't, uh, please uh, ten uh, tell no, to no, me no. because this is what correct. I remember. Definitely well, correct. Uh, Definitely but correct. I think that I think that at two point two, yeah, I will take the risk with uh, Torino to to win uh, this game, given the fact of uh, Parma's uh, multiple injuries and uh, not one hundred percent fit players. So my take is Torino at 2.2 and under 2.5 goals in the match at 1.8. OK, and we also like draw at half-time. I think draw at half-time is probably going to be a theme that we could go quite safely, which obviously brings in the most goals to be scored in the second half. Let's go on again, Tan. Verona plus 115, draw plus 235 and Calorie at plus 265. Now, in this uh, absolutely uh, crazy timing of the season, uh, uh, just think about, uh, if you can imagine uh, a Murphy law about setting a manager, so that would apply to the former Cagliari manager, Maran, who was, play, was going so good in the first half of the season. He was fifth. He went close to almost qualify uh, Cagliari to Champions League. Well, then he started the downhill. Nobody thought they could be fired. Well, what happened? He's actually fired at the end, or by the end of February. Walter Zenga is hired just before that the league is halted. So basically, Walter Zenga, new career manager, hasn't still played, well, managed for one single game career. So is anything new for them? Now, in a normal situation, even though in a normal situation, Verona would be openly the favorite. Uh, they just have been the real underdog of this season. Verona is a team that, for what is their value on cards, uh, should be 18th, 19th, and they are playing uh, against, they are fighting with Milan for an Europa League spot. Uh, they are playing a, a very intense uh, and uh, focused football. Um, there has been this long break, and Cagliari you know, will be eager to show that they, they want to start a brand new thing under Walter Zenga. I don't know how long they will last, but they want to start 
brand new thing under Walter Zenga. Normally, in a normal situation, I would say Verona all the way. I, I think it can happen again a draw here, but at least I go even here for a draw at half time. Draw half time again for you. Copy and paste, Alex. Yeah, copy and paste. The man knows uh, his uh, his uh, country, knows his football, well, that's knows the teams by heart. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is a big plus uh, for us uh, um, uh, in the in the team that we want to create also for the for the next season. But um, Verona, surprisingly, yes, uh, very very surprised with the uh, Verona this season. Uh, on paper, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, Cagliari are favorites in my opinion because of the squad they have at their disposal. I mean, you cannot compare Joao Pedro with someone from Verona or Nain Golan, uh, Paloski or uh, uh, Cacciatore and so on. Uh, players with huge, huge, huge experience uh, in the European uh, leagues uh, and most of all in uh, Serie A. Um, it's the first match uh, since uh, Serie A uh, returned. So... Um, the fitness, uh, uh, the fitness levels will be no, will not be high. Uh, the the squads will not push it uh, uh, from from the beginning like Tan uh, like uh, Tan said. I think that uh, he ha he's on point with uh, that draw at halftime. I'm going with both teams to score in this one. I think that both teams will find the back of the net at 1.8. Uh, and I think that uh, Cagliari should be higher than uh, 12 in the standings right now. Uh, and I think that we will see them in uh, top 10 at the end of the season. Yeah, Calorie at double chance was the way to go for me. I'll do, obviously, if we're going to say this, I know it's going to be like a stuck record, but draw at half time. I think it'd be cautious. They're not want to, going to be wanting the tie. Remember the five subs in the second half as well. That will change games. Now, just a reminder, just get yourself chatting in the chat because you are our third guest and there's a Juventus are dead. We're going with Napoli to be uh, coming on strong. Just get your questions in there and I'll throw it at the boys. Now, there are your games on Saturday. Let's move on to Sunday and we're straight in to, uh, to Alex. Atalanta, minus 283. Draw, plus 475. And Sassuolo at plus 850, Tan. Uh, first me or Alex? I thought it was like a, a, a first ride for him for Atalanta. Look, obviously, imagine is going to be a very particular situation and atmosphere because uh, it is known that in Bergamo it has been one of the main epicenter of the uh, of the um, pandemia in Italy. So it's there's a very huge atmosphere. Just imagine that Atalanta Sassuolo will be the first Serie A game free to air televised free to air after 30 years. So. It's like giving the, the gala uh, opening to them. Uh, all these things, you can feel, you can think how much they are feeling uh, this uh, appointment. They really want to, to, give a, to give a joy, you know, even if the fans won't be there. Uh, they both are probably the two, the two teams that both are playing uh, that most are playing with open play in Serie A. Atalanta being more effective and with more uh, unbelievable quality players like Gomez and my beloved Josip Pilicic. Sassuolo uh, being very offensive, but with not so good player as them, although if Jeremy Boga, former Chelsea-owned uh, winger, uh, is uh, striking attention to many uh, scouts, I think it will be a game full of goals. I would say at least, at least over two and a half goals. Uh, but still, well, Atalanta, as also the odds are saying, are mainly favorite. Well, if I should pick one, I would go with the combo Atalanta to win and over two and a half goals. You love this, Tan. You've just sat in that seat and settled in as if you've been here for years. Alex, we like that. Atlanta to win and over two and a half goals. He's made for that. <laughs> I'm seeing <laughs> he, he loved it. Uh, I, will, I will push, you know, a little bit here because I have my Alex Classic in the bag. So uh, just for Tan to know, the Alex Classic means 
both teams to score and over 2.5 goals in the match. And we just uh, have Domenico Berardi also. Uh, we have uh, Caputo also with a, with a great experience in the Sassuolo team. Ilicic is one of my favorites also, but um, I, I love also Zapata and also Papu Gomez. The, the little Messi of uh, Atalanta, I think that he's brilliant. I think that um, he's How very creative is is and 70 like goals in 25 matches uh, uh, for, uh, for an Italian team, uh, ma uh, which is not Juventus or Inter or Pase Roma or Lazio or so on. Is Atalanta and to qualify in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. They had an incredible season. But again, this is the first match since return. As uh, Tan said, they have the gala opening. They have to show us uh, what they are capable of. They have to bring it on. They have to, uh, to make the people stay, watch that match till the end because we love goals. Uh, and uh, exactly like uh, Tan said, uh, I love these two teams because um, they are the most uh, exciting ones to watch in terms of attack, in terms of goals. Uh, open, uh, open play mean goals, uh, I don't know. I would not even go for a prop bet like someone to score because we always have that also, anytime goal scorer. But um, if we look uh, a, lit a, lit a little bit on the um, top scorer chart, Ilicic is far behind uh, Immobile or Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, so I wouldn't uh, watch that. The, the, the good thing about uh, Atalanta is no matter who is inside that squad, they will all score. Imagine Ilicic, Muriel and Zapata have 39 goals between them uh, in uh, this season. So, uh, yeah, both teams to score and the over 2.5 goals, the Alex Classic, priced at 1.91. Yeah, it's a great price. I, I'm listening, Jack's gone for, uh, I'm going for Atlanta to win and over three and a half. Matt Lawrence is saying Tancredi and Alex, a dynamic duo. Yeah, they're doing all right. They're doing all right, but it's early days. Remember, it's their first game back. So I expect them to tire in the second half, Matt. Let's move on. Inter Milan at minus 275. The draw, plus 425. And Sampdoria at plus 815. Both the shirts are behind you, Tan. Which one comes out victorious? Not only they are both behind, but I show you, because the, 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 the framing is not showing enough. I don't know if you recognize this. USA 94 uh, Italy shirts uh, because uh, actually exactly on 17th of June of 94 the World Cup started uh, in USA. Antonio Conte was part of that squad. Antonio Conte now managing Inter. As I said before when I actually misunderstood your uh, opening and I thought we were already going for the uh, prediction of Inter Sampdoria but as I said Inter uh, is bouncing back after uh, Crazy criticism after the semi-final. They played very, very good for being the first game. It was at, Napo at Naples against Napoli uh, that were closing behind because they won one nil the first leg, so they could just sit and wait. And Inter just produced football, produced football. They only stumbled into a bad night of Lautaro Martinez and Lukaku. But otherwise, there was nothing to uh, really to for which they should be tell, uh, told off and actually Antonio Conte who is always complaining after the games when he's not winning uh, was one of the few times he said I really have nothing to say about that we really couldn't do more uh, this criticism is making me think that they will make it against Sampdoria because even if Sampdoria with Ranieri is defending very good but I feel like there is uh, some uh, hungry anger and anger inside Inter after what happened. So I think that uh, Sampdoria is going to pay the check for that. And so I say Inter to win by at least, by at least two goal advantage. Two or plus goal advantage. Wow, that brings in the minus 1.5. Just a quick one though, Tan. How are the locals, the Italians, how are they taking to Lukaku? Because I went on record straight away and said, not for me. Look, I know that England, uh, in England was the most wanted man for his first touch. And uh, when I remember when uh, I was giving news about Lukaku or updates, there was, I was receiving uh, uh, an amount of messages from English fans saying, oh, Lukaku for touch, Lukaku for touch. He's doing greatly. 
is doing great. Then obviously, not always is performing uh, uh, like uh, being the man of the match, but he's always committed. He's playing a lot for the team. The uh, shining of Lautaro is, uh, which uh, let's remind, uh, he got a, a, a deal on, on table with Barcelona. Just Barcelona needs to find an agreement uh, with Inter, so it must be some good. Uh, that came, that shining, uh, thank to the work, the hard work of Lukaku. And meanwhile, Lukaku also scored, uh, I don't remember exactly, but among all competitions, if I, don't, if I don't remember badly, almost 20 goals, which is already a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this team. means that maybe there was an over-criticism. Uh, you should think that Lukaku, in his two or three years, I don't remember, at, uh, at Manchester United, well, those two free seasons Manchester United were a shamble. Were a shamble for anybody, even for Pogba, who was one of the main men of France, of France World Cup. So, uh, he's not Cristiano Ronaldo, obviously, but I think there was uh, an unfair criticism. And he's doing uh, the difference. OK, well, we'll give him a bit of time, Tam. We'll see if he uh, continues. Obviously, you've got Alexis Sanchez there as well, Alex. Uh, yeah, but you cannot compare Alexis Sanchez with uh, Romelu Lukaku. I mean, uh, Romelu Lukaku is uh, better for Syria than Alexis Sanchez, in my opinion. Romelu Lukaku will do you the difference one-on-one uh, -on -one in a corner, in a set pieces. Uh, Romelu Lukaku will uh, deliver some assists for Lautaro Martinez or for, uh, for other players. Uh, you will not see many uh, many stuff from Alexis Sanchez. I love the guy. He's creative, uh, but he doesn't have. Um, uh, he will need some time to adapt. Let's say that uh, on Serie A. Also, Eriksson, uh, Christian Eriksson, will need uh, uh, this season to adapt, and it's very good uh, uh, for him that uh, uh, there was this lockdown. After that, we will have 12. Uh, uh, 12 rounds till the end of the season. So I think that we will see the real face of Alexis Sanchez and uh, Christian Eriksen next season with uh, Inter Milan. Uh, for now, we have Stefano Sensi. I love the guy. Um, I think that um, uh, Lautaro and uh, Romelu Lukaku should, did, should do the difference in this match. Ranieri, as I said, I think that he will park the bus. I will not even complicate myself. Inter are by far the better side between the two. I will go Inter to win and under 4.5 goals in the match at 1.7 because I don't see five goals in the match. And I don't see Sam Doria uh, 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 scoring, uh, to be honest. But... Uh, I don't know. Free one? I will take a free one. I will take a free zero. I will take a two zero. It doesn't really matter for me. For if, uh, I, I would go more for a classic two zero. Seems like in San Siro they will just put a stamp at, at the gate of San Siro saying this is a two zero game. It yeah, looks it looks like, like an absolute it. banker to be fair, gents. I mean, you, you go with Inter, win under four and a half goals. Yeah, I can definitely see. Worst case scenario, 3-1. But 2-0 looks like an absolute shoo-in. Now, just to let people know that we are going to do a Serie A show on Monday. But obviously, I want to give you a bit of time to enjoy Monday's games and get the right bets in. So we're going to cover Monday's games now. And then when we do the show on Monday, we will start with the Tuesday games. Remember, 43 games in 44 days. So there's no taking deep breaths. You've just got to make sure that you stay the pace. So we're going to go to Monday's game. Friontina minus 1AA. Draw plus 350. And Brescia plus 610. Look, uh, Brescia are a shamble. A total shamble. Balotelli, uh, they not even let him uh, to train. They said he was not going to train. Then he accused that he wasn't... Uh, the testing... Uh, the test is mandatory, wasn't done on him, total shamble. Uh, Tonali, the next big thing, he is the next big thing, is a kind of Pirlo that probably next year will be or at Inter or at Juventus, more likely at Inter, for some 45 million euros. Uh, he is actually yesterday picked up a muscular injury, and we are without Balotelli and Tonali, you are practically taking out 66% uh, of the potential of Brescia. And Fiorentina got uh, this uh, team spirit since Beppe Iacchini came in. Uh, they got rid of all the um, entertainment they should have provided with uh, Chiesa, uh, New Youngster, with uh, uh, Castroville and the others, but at least they are making points. Uh, they are staying very 
Uh, yeah, staying very focused and just thinking about, okay, let's get the points we need. Let's get the points we need. So I don't see Brescia, honestly, not, not, not getting any point. I'm just thinking whether if Fiorentina will go, be good enough to score more. But maybe, maybe the score sheet won't be that rich, but the game will be oriented since the very beginning. So I would say I would pick the combo Fiorentina to be ahead in first half and second half. So half time, full time. He's bringing all the combos, uh, Alex. <laughs> I loved it. I, ha I also have a combo for, uh, for this match. Uh, Frank Ribéry, um, uh, we know that Frank Ribéry has it, still has it, no matter the age, the experience. Uh, uh, and uh, to, to be honest, uh, this uh, pandemic was, uh, was the best thing that uh, could happen to Frank Ribéry because he is back in training and I think that uh, we might uh, even see him uh, in this match against Brescia. I don't know why we have so high odds for Fiorentina. Fiorentina put them in a parley right now. In a parlay easily, in a free, a free game parlay, they are like 1.57 um, uh, to, to win this match. Shop around for your odds because on some, uh, on some bookies you will find 1.6, on some of them you will find 1.5. Uh, but I will not stay even to discuss here. Fiorentina to win and over 1.5 goals in the match at 1.87. And I'm really sure that Fiorentina have the firepower to find the back of the net on their own twice with um, yeah, Cutrone, with, uh, um, with uh, Chiesa. I think that uh, they have the necessary weapons to, to go and uh, to score two, di two times on their own. Yeah, I'm like a nodding dog. I totally agree with that. I, I, I've already wrote down, I've gone with Fiorentina and over 1.5 goals. Now, in the chat, Wooten says, I'm going to Brescia. Well, I, I hope that you mean you're going on holiday to Brescia, so enjoy. If you mean you're going to bet Brescia, look at me now. I'm going to be deadly serious with you. Stay off the drugs, OK? Leave them <laughs> alone. Friontina win. OK, now, Lecce plus 4.50. Draw plus 3.10. And AC Milan at minus 143, Tan. Look, the Milan... Uh, OK, first of all, there is Ibrahimovic that is uh, running against the clock to make it on time, to recover on time for his muscular injury for this game. I still think uh, Stefano Pioli, Milan manager, will say to him, uh, Zlatan, slow down. We have many games. There is really no rush. If you don't make it for this, we are 11 games more. Uh, believe me, there is plenty of playing. Uh, although Ibrahimovic wants to show off in front of the uh, Milan management that won't confirm him uh, next uh, season. Uh, as I said, though, Lecce is playing very good. Lecce is playing much better than Milan. Much better. Miles better. Obviously, we are talking about different kind of players, different level. Um, but Lecce are playing open. Milan are more tight. We saw in Coppa Italia, it was a, a weird situation. They were down to 10 men after uh, 15 minutes against Juventus. So they not even park the bus. They park the bus, they broke the tires, so the bus, the bus <laughs> couldn't move anymore, and they set on fire the bus so that any truck couldn't come and remove the bus from the goal. So they did everything, really. Um, it won't be the same. Lecce will be more open. Milan, in my opinion, will enjoy a bit of that openness in playing. If I should... Um, if I should pick one, I would say both teams to score. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, Tan. I've gone with both teams to score. And my other question was going to be to Alex. And Alex, Lecce at plus 450 at home. I know that we're looking at and, uh, the stats. On the, all the other leagues are saying that the away team have an advantage. But is there any uh, big value in double chance the home side? Uh, plus one on the Asian handicap. So I have two bets. Uh, I have the both team to score absolutely 1.71. Take it. I'm all over that uh, that bet with uh, Baba Car coming strong with uh, uh, Diego Farias doubtful a little, but I think that uh, he will make it. Uh, they have a, uh, they have an absolutely stunning um, uh, a squad. I mean, uh, they they should 
be upper than what they they are right now. But it's exactly their style of play that, that they are bringing them to concede so many goals. And let's not forget that they conceded last time seven from Atalanta. You know, Atalanta, when uh, they saw that uh, they are opening spaces at the back, they said, oh, heaven on earth, let's go for all in, you know, because this is Atalanta. This is what uh, they are doing. So, uh, yeah, both teams to score looks the, the best thing that you can take here. But plus one on the Asian handicap on Lecce, because I don't think that they will, if they will lose, they will not make it at one more than one goal difference, again at 1.7. So I will take uh, both of them. I, uh, Zlatan, yeah, I don't think that uh, he will play. I don't think that uh, uh, the manager will um, will let him play. Uh, as uh, Tan said, uh, there are plenty, plenty of matches ahead. And uh, no matter uh, uh, how important is, uh, he is for the team, uh, I think that uh, he will uh, sit this one out. And we will see Lecce running for the points, maybe, uh, in uh, against this Milan side, who are still... Um, trying to make a good team for the next season. I'm sure that they will put a lot of, uh, they will put their hand in the pocket and they will buy some players uh, at the end of this season or in the meantime. Uh, but still, uh, this uh, Milan side uh, uh, hasn't impressed me and I don't think that uh, they will qualify for the European Cups. They will sit there exactly under the line there. Just the intensity and uh, desperation. Go on, Tan. You Listen, you haven't got to put your hand up. You're not in school. This is your show. You interrupt as you uh, wish. No, I just wanted to say one thing that uh, I respect a lot Lecce, but I heard Alex saying uh, that their squad is, is stunning. It reminds me like uh, when I hang out with some friends at a club and after five beers, they start to see everybody around that is stunning. I do respect Lecce. But now, calling them standing, it really seems like after five beers saying, oh, you are so beautiful. It just seems like that, Alex. But just, just, just my opinion, my opinion. <laughs> I they, just are, they are standing for a, for, a, for, a middle, for a middle type of team. Of course, they'll, they will not compete with Juventus. They will not compete with the big guns. But for their level and their squad, I think that they are brilliant. I think that the, 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 the play, the... The open space, the, the, the way that they are attacking, that the talent that they have at their disposal, that is I think that they are a good team. Of course, they will not fight with Juventus for the That is true, but I think you are already entitled to request honorary citizenship to the City Hall of Lecce. In my opinion, you already gained some credit <laughs> to get the honorary citizenship. I just think that Lecce. I will wish to have the. I wish to. I wish to take the key of Bergamo. But uh, okay, Lecce, I'm okay. We work on that. We work on that. We work on that. Okay, so I think that Lecce um, intensity, a little bit of desperation. I think if they're going to get something, they're going to get it now. They're going to catch Milan cold. So for me, I think the double chance on on Lecce is probably the way to go. Now the last game on Monday night is the game that absolutely jumped out on me for value. It's Bologna at plus 5.50, draw plus 3.50 and Juve at minus 180, Tan. Look, uh, while we were talking about Lecce, there was a WhatsApp message that was popping out in my phone straight from a uh, from, uh, colleague, correspondent in Turin. He just sent me out the message that uh, Alexandro Enchedira picked up injury in the Coppa Italia final uh, that was played uh, on, uh, on Wednesday. Uh, that plus this fallout after the defeat that guys was really i mean i, I know it was just some penalty so looking from far and say okay you can lose a penalty with napoli but uh, juventus was really nothing uh, napoli first played uh, a good old catenaccio in the first half but then they went for the game and juventus just stood there cristiano ronaldo one of, one of his worst performance ever in his career the worst thing was Maurizio Sarri after the game surrendering, but not of the game, surrendering in the season, saying, mind, Sarri is like Guardiola style, so collective playing, like Dutch playing. And Sarri said, the players in this team are accustomed to win the game only with one solo uh, action. 
they are accustomed to just receive the ball. That was like killing the self-esteem of the team. Like saying, I'm sorry, in the last nine months, they have never been listening to me. They were never behind me. So the, the fallout after that final is going to be huge. Usually, flash, you've played uh, so many years. All this, well, meanwhile, in right in this moment, uh, my colleague in Turin is telling me one month out, Alexandro. Uh, while Kedira, apparently, uh, they prefer not to say any time for uh, how long he will be out. Anyway, um, you playing many years. When there is such a fallout, or the team is uh, completely bouncing back and rising up, or is blowing out and uh, droning. Now, I, I can see that far. The thing is that Bologna is such a fighting team. Under Sinisa Mihailovic, mamma mia, they can kick legs more than Gordon Flash Watson. They can really kick some <laughs> legs. They can really intimidate uh, even bigger teams. So I believe uh, Bologna are looking forward to crunch Juventus bones. I would say anyway, at least, a draw in the first half. But look, Bologna can play such a surprise even after the full time. I, I just thought the biggest moral was that Bologna score, Alex. I think Bologna, and then let's find a way to get some decent value because at first it jumped out at me. I went, Bologna score. Now let's find the value. I will not give them that uh, uh, to score. Uh, I I think that uh, they will uh, they will put everything on uh, everyone when playing with Juventus are playing their best football are trying to uh, to take points to win and to demonstrate uh, uh, what uh, they are capable of. I see this match under three goals on the Asian handicap at 1.72. I don't see a ton of goals in this one because. Uh, Nap uh, Juventus will be desperate to, 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 to show that what happened against uh, Napoli was a mistake. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo's sister, again on Instagram, uh, she will go on and uh, uh, talk uh, like uh, she knows football and uh, knows uh, she's the, al already the coach of uh, Juventus, you know, uh, but uh, she doesn't. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't swear. It's okay. I want it, but uh, no. <laughs> no, no, okay. no, no. It's, uh, it's the fact of uh, she talks as if she knows football. If she finds you, she's going to slap you. Z slap you as it would be uh, Gordon Watson at the halftime in the time. Hey, I remember, I remember when I questioned a lady, I questioned Mina, and she absolutely slapped me, wiped the floor with me, and I could not. So listen, I'm not getting involved. If a woman wants to have an opinion I about remember, football... I remember that. You I remember when we went it. out of live also. <laughs> and I said, I want just to step out of the studio slowly I, and I... silently. <laughs> I don't have a problem with uh, with uh, girls uh, capping uh, uh, our sport or uh, any other sport. <laughs> uh, we have we have some brilliant uh, ones out there, but uh, she was all over the ego of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. This is what uh, uh, she made me a bad impression because yeah, you gave it everything. It's only you that you are doing. The rest are not doing anything. Excuse me, we are a team. We know what we have to do. Don't go into the boys' uh, uh, stuff. So stay there, enjoy your game. If I score, look, this, Alex. This what I give you a hint. I give you a hint. Cristiano Ronaldo family is not only his family; it's his clan. Uh, when one of the relatives is putting out a message like that, it happened in the past with mother. With the, it's not yeah. so, just waking up and randomly saying that. It's the expression of what the Cristiano Ronaldo world is thinking. And Cristiano Ronaldo is at the heart of that world. In that message... Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, saying, just putting in context. In that message, she said also, you can always do miracles. And she also added, uh, that's not the right way to play. Mamma mia. That's like... Firing straight at Maurizio Sarri. <laughs> so do we fancy Juventus to win the game, Alex? Yeah, I think that uh, they, will, uh, they will win the game. But uh, I think that uh, they will not even concede a goal in this one. Let's give it uh, to them that uh, they have a great uh, uh, defensive uh, uh, squad. And I, I think that uh, they will keep uh, things tight. So I'm going like that. I'm going... 
under three point five under three goals on the Asian handicap at one point seven two, and I'm going also both teams to score no at two point one. Wow. I, I'm all over the both teams to score. I'm all over Bologna scoring. But anyway, listen, before we have the recap, I'll thank give God, him... thank God that you are thank God that you are all over the both teams to oh, score. Oh, hang on a minute. You're meant to be my the mate. To score, no, will come as a winner. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a hard man. And now I've got two of you that can gang up on me. Listen, just give me a little bit of confidence. I will be fine, I promise you. Now, before I get a recap from the lads, please, if you've enjoyed this video as much as I have, and it's been an absolute classic, then please subscribe, press the button, ring the bell, give a thumbs up. The thumbs up's for the gentlemen that are giving you all the information. And how about that? That Tancredi's given us up-to-date messages coming through from the Press Association of players being injured. That's a first as well so please subscribe press the button ring the bell and we'll notify you of any content and press another button and uh, Tancredi will give you the team news also press the link in the art <laughs> of the link in the description and you can go over to all our soccer articles now Alex give me your rundown of your games please uh, Torino, uh, Torino to win at 2.2 and under 2.5 goals in that match at 1.8. Uh, Verona Cagliari both team to score at 1.8. Uh, Atalanta Sassuolo, Alex Classic both team to score and over 2.5 goals at 1.91. Um, Inter uh, to win and under 4.5 goals at 1.7. Fiorentina uh, to win and over 1.5 goals at 1.87. Uh, Lecce Milan both team to score at 1.71, but also plus one on the Asian handicap at 1.71. Uh, uh, Bologna Juventus under three goals on the Asian handicap at 1.72, and also both team to score no at 2.1. And I have to go with a banker with a two unit uh, bet, um, Atalanta Sassuolo, the Alex Classic at 1.91. Tan, I won't get you to go through the uh, the whole card. Can you give me two of your favourites that you've mentioned, please? Yeah, also because I have no idea. No, no, I could remember anyway. <laughs> yeah. That's why. Well, I know I you can't remember. You. Your name is Tancredi and you're here with us at SPR. <laughs> uh, you are challenging me? OK, so I go. Come well, on. No, okay. You want the two favourites or the least? Come on. I can go with both of you. Come on, you go with Come whatever you want. you want. The floor is yours. OK, let, let, let's see. The floor is lava. So, let's see. OK, so I would say... Tor eh, eh, Torino Parma eh, eh, draw at half time. Verona Cagliari draw at half time. Atalanta Sassuolo combo. Atalanta winning and both team scoring. No, sorry, and over two and a half goals. And over five, In yeah. Inter Sampdoria, Inter to win with at least two goal advantage. Fiorentina Brescia, Fiorentina to win in first half and in second half. Lecce Milan. It was both teams to score. And Bologna-Juventus draw at half-time. Am I approved? You are on fire. Bravo. <laughs> Listen, it's Tan, obviously, it's great to see you. Uh, we'll see you again and let everyone know that we're going to go again on Monday. Alex, good luck this weekend. I hope everyone in the chat enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, thank you. It was an honor, honor to be uh, next to Tancredi. Uh, I we are both Latino Latino people, so uh, uh, you will have a lot of fun with us uh, also this season, but also next season. Um, and yeah, if uh, he was talking about uh, World Cup 94, if I remember cor correct, uh, Romania quarterfinals uh, almost made it to the semifinals against uh, Brazil. Only our goalkeeper screwed it up and... Uh, he conceded that uh, shit goal. So, yeah, a lot of uh, great memories uh, from uh, 94 Alex, with, uh, you don't with know. My, my country. You don't know, 30 years ago, that was uh, running uh, Italy 90, the World Cup, I was, I was live at the game Romania-USSR, Brace from Lacatus, and Romania-Cameroon. My most, one of my most vivid memories from the World Cup in Italy was in the afternoon when we were driving to the San Nicola Stadium in Bari and there was plenty of uh, Balkanic bus full of Romanians that came by ferry boat to go to stadium 
and they were all with the Romanian shirt uh, with the hole in the middle because they had cut out uh, the communist logo yeah, from the after regime. 89. Yeah. One of the one of the greatest memory. Barry loves Romania. Barry loves the Raducho, Florian Raducoyu. So it's a match of course. in course. Anyway, you two can just uh, wander off and have a table for two. I'll see you again Monday. Have a great weekend. Until then, you take care. Thank you. Bye, guys.